Well, good morning. Welcome to Fantasy Sports Today. You ready to stream some NFL football? Well, that is the only choice you got tonight. Craig Mish, Davis Maddock, along for the ride. Today, the two of us for the next hour talking fantasy football with you, getting you ready for this matchup tonight, Davis, between the Chargers and Chiefs. And uh, listen, speaking of millennials and speaking of people who like to stream games, I think this is going to be right up their alley, right up your alley too. But Davis, there's a large portion of this country tonight that is going to be freaking out, right? They're going to be freaking out, trying to find this game, figure out how to watch this game. How do I do it? Calling their daughters, calling their sons. Hey, can you help me? I don't understand. I want to watch football tonight and I can't do it. I I think that the next generation of football watching begins tonight. My dad, I'm going to set the timeline at 10 minutes before kickoff. My dad is going to text me and say, how do I watch this game? I turned on, yeah. you know, the NFL network. I turned on whatever. I can't find it. How do I watch it? Uh, you know, probably, uh, you know, group chat with my buddies. These, these are not even, these are not even old people either. You know, these are, these are 28, 29, 30 year olds. I guarantee you a minimum of one person will either say, where's the game? Or mm-hmm. can I get someone's password to watch the game? Right. Gar- I absolutely guarantee that's going to happen. And you know what? I'm really looking forward to it. Cause I, the 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 um the primetime games i stream them anyways i never watch thursday night football sunday night football monday night football on tv i'm always watching it on my phone or my ipad anyways so not even going to be a big change for me yeah no I, not for you not for me of course i know how to do it but for a lot of people i do think that this is a game changer and i think the same thing's going to happen with me either my father-in-law or my neighbor i'm going to get a call tonight hey what is going on here like what do i got to do to be able to watch this game and, and I think it's a good thing. I think that this will engage more people on how to stream. Obviously, if you're watching this show, you know how to do it. But for a lot of people tonight, it's definitely a switch. All right, let's get to our headlines here on the show as we begin this September 15, 2022. Week 2 kicks off tonight. Again, Amazon Prime, Chargers, and Chiefs. You want fantasy? You got it tonight. A lot of good options. Your quarterbacks are going tonight. Your receivers are going tonight. Your running backs are going tonight as well. Broncos place star safety Justin Simmons on injured reserve. They, of course, take on Houston this week at home. Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina make history. 325 starts as battery mates last night. What a cool story there. And Julio Rodriguez becomes the third rookie ever to join the 25 home run, 25 stolen base club. I do want to mention my buddy last night, JT Realmuto uh, Davis. He hit two home runs. And I know that you know this uh, playing in the NFBC, but Real Muto is trying to become the second catcher in the history of Major League Baseball to have 20 home runs and 20 steals. What is that worth in fantasy baseball? That's an incredible feat. Yes, yes, it definitely is. Hats off to our our friend. And if you're going to take the time to mention your friend, JT Real Muto, I'm going to mention my guy, Bobby Witt Jr., who just hit his 20th home run. So he's 20 home runs, 27 steals, and he's at a middle infield position. I have a feeling that uh, Bobby Witt, Julio Rodriguez, and all those guys, we're going to be really talking about all those guys for fantasy football next season for sure. Very excited, of course, for this game tonight. I mean, honestly, either team loses this game, Chiefs lose this game, Chargers lose this game. I mean, this is pretty early to start thinking about the division, but the, the Raiders looked really good in week one. They did end up losing. The Broncos gained uh I, I think it was 8.1 yards per play but just kept fumbling on like yeah. that division is so competitive these games i mean i do not i dare i do not envy either of these head coaches heading into basically a must win game in week two of the season i mean chiefs look fantastic week one chargers could have easily lost that game to the raiders last week no question but the chargers tend to be really good when they're not supposed to win that's usually who they are i don't know if that's going to be the case tonight i don't like this game at all in terms of that but i do love it for fantasy so naturally uh, i'll have some guys involved in the game tonight no doubt uh let let's uh end our uh, opening segment with a, a tip of the cap to roger federer davis who announced that he's going to retire next week after the labor cup and naturally uh he is probably going to go down as the best uh you know of all time i guess right i mean i think that's fair to say he pete sampras jimmy connors john macaron like he's right there with all of them and has more championships i believe 20 than all of them too so a big story in tennis today as we uh, get ready to talk more football 
Yeah, Federer, absolutely a phenomenal player. And uh, I mean, maybe this is uh, this is anecdotal more than anything, but I, I've noticed like a recent uptick in attention paid to tennis. I mean, partly because uh, Carlos Alcaraz is so great. We had an American, uh, Francis Tiafo, you know, making it into the semifinals of the U.S. Open. We had Serena doing her retirement. I mean, and what a great sport. I, you know, difficult, difficult sport for us to talk about a lot here on FST because, not that many people play fantasy tennis, but uh, yeah, definitely tip of our our caps to a champion, Roger Federer. Yeah, no question. Uh, Federer, uh, greatest really. I mean, hard to argue of all time. All right, coming up next, fantasy football is back. In fact, Derek Brown's going to join us coming up in about 15 minutes. We'll go through the DFS slate for tonight, who you should pick in the MVP spot or the captain spot, depending on where you're playing tonight on FanDuel or DraftKings. But uh, there are a lot of players out there, and you know who I'm talking about, that are either out this week or they lost their quarterback, or week one was just an unmitigated disaster, and you're already thinking I'm finished in fantasy football. Well, maybe they're by low candidates, and we'll talk about that on the show coming up. Davis and Craig back with you here with more fantasy sports today on Sports Grid. so stay with us on The Grid. We're back in just a couple of minutes. It is Thursday. It is fantasy football time, and we have the latest for you coming up right after this break, so don't go away. Great, great. The morning after a Super Bowl winning head coach in Nathaniel Hackett, at least not through game number one. My very measured, calm reaction that some are labeling an overreaction is they should fire Nathaniel Hackett. How do you get every single big decision wrong? I, 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 how does every single one of those decisions go wrong? It's fourth and one. You need a touchdown. The Sports Grid Network. But the one that I spent the most money on was Army. And you know what? I'm ready to join the Navy. And if Navy screws me today on Memphis, I'm going to join the Air Force. What the hell's going on? With you? Why are you trade for this kid? Like you said, he's a high schooler from North Dakota. He's in over his head and all this other stuff. But watching the game, Scotty, the Niners defense, bro, they stop them and they get a penalty every damn play. In-game live all access only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, Gerald Everett, uh, probably, you know, not drafted in some leagues. And again, with no Keenan Allen, he will suit up this week against Kansas City for the Chargers. Robert Tunyon on Green Bay. None of their receivers look good. Hayden Hurst maybe gets an extra look. This is how bad the tight end position is. Um, only 12 guys scored in the double digits. It is just a, a desperately brutal position. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I think Penn State will go to Auburn and win. Auburn looks terrible. I think Oregon can, can get their reputation back if they beat BYU at Alton. That is like the Broncos going into that uh, Seattle game last night with that crowd. You play at Alton, you're going to have a long day. I don't care who you are. And then Oklahoma should roll Nebraska, but it's a, a rivalry game. Be very careful with that number. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice.
Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today here on Sports Grid. I like our approach here on the show today, Davis. It's really easy to just go over everyone that's doing really well and maybe players you should be trading for or starting. But we are definitely taking the contrarian approach on the show today because, Davis, there's a lot of folks that are watching us out there right now. And they're, they're in dismay, right? They're like, oh, my gosh, I got these guys. They're not doing anything. Should I cut them? Should I let them go? And, and look, there's always light at the end of the tunnel, whether it is picking somebody else up or maybe buying low on a player. And that's going to be the topic of discussion that we're going to cover here. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty important topic to discuss because you can kind of kill your roster by holding on to a lot of guys you drafted highly or really liked who don't show anything early on. I actually like uh, was thinking about this this morning with someone like Robert Woods. Like to me, if I drafted Robert Woods in like the eighth or ninth round or whatever, I just would cut him this morning because it's just not happening for him but the way most people but then I was also thinking is like if Robert Woods got cut in one of my other leagues I might add him so it's like you know it's so much a beauty uh is in the eye of the beholder type thing but yeah I mean cutting really highly drafted guys I think is something that good fantasy managers do a lot yeah you have to be willing to do it and and I and that goes for reality too I mean these teams in football baseball basketball they just hang on so long to get value out of someone it just makes no sense to me uh okay so look you never want to be on the end Davis of of that moss as last year like you never want to be there where you take a guy and they're just done I don't think Keenan Allen is done by any means I mean the guy is coming off a great year but I, I think you just kind of have to accept one or two games a year he's just going to miss as he's getting up there with age. And there's a lot of very frustrated fantasy owners. Uh, last week he started off well, got hurt, missed the game. Do you think that he is a candidate to pluck off someone's roster right now to roster for your team the rest of the season? Nope, I would uh, I would be looking to trade Keenan Allen to a true believer. I definitely would not cut him. You know, cutting like Keenan Allen's going to come back and he's going to be fine, but he is a... 31-year-old wide receiver with a hamstring injury. They drafted Josh Palmer in the third round last season. In the one game that Keenan Allen missed last season, the Chargers, I think crucially, they won. And Palmer had 70 yards and a touchdown. Maybe more importantly, they just paid Mike Williams $21 million a year. Uh, And I, I think a lot of the evidence would suggest that Mike Williams is, you know, not as good of a route runner as Keenan Allen, but certainly a more physically dominant wide receiver. Austin Eckler, one of the best passing down backs in the NFL. They signed Gerald Everett in free agency. Like, if I could get AJ Dillon for Keenan Allen right now, I would, I would, de- I would, I would super pull the trigger on that. And I would maybe even pull. The, I would, you know, try and trade Keenan for like a younger wide receiver or a guy who maybe had a bad week one, but you're high on like. 31-year-old wide receiver with a hamstring injury, not not for me. Yeah, no, usually that means it's toward the end, but we'll see for Allen. Uh, okay, now let's move on to the Dallas Cowboys. We touched on this a little bit yesterday, so you can go back and watch on YouTube or on demand. But we touched on CeeDee Lamb, who had a fantastic first season with Dallas, and I was very high on last year, but naturally going to be playing without Dak Prescott for a month. And, and I think that as you alluded to yesterday, you were looking to get 20 cents on the dollar on Lamb, if you can. 20 cents. I mean, doesn't 20 cents feel optimistic right now if you play in a league with other people who kind of know what's going on and are intelligent? Now, you know, if you're playing in a league with guys who like, you know, they watch the local team and, you know, maybe they watch the noon game and Sunday night football, but like if they don't realize that the entire Cowboys offensive line is dead, that... CD Lamb had 11 targets last week and only had two receptions. That the cow, like the Cowboys, it's just all a mess. I mean, everything with the Cowboys is a mess. And maybe I'll end up, you know, eating these words in the end. And Dak Prescott will come back sooner than I think. And CD will, you know, get all these targets and Gallup will come back. And the Cowboys are going to be right. scoring 29 points a week. I will, I will tell you uh, my skin in the game answer. I am in a long time keeper league with my friends. You get to keep one player every single year. I had CD Lamb kept for a sixth round pick, and I just traded him away for a fourth round pick in our draft next year. And I felt happy to get out from underneath him on uh, on that price. Yeah, no, I, I know it's it's a tough scene for sure, especially as you mentioned in keeper dynasty too. All right, here's an interesting one: T Higgins, because at the beginning of last season, Davis, you and I both were very high on T Higgins, and he did put together some really good like fantasy winning games but Jamar Chase just emerged and and just went so far ahead of where T Higgins was 
And look, a concussion is not derailing anyone's season, I don't think. But that is the key thing that we I think we have to circle here, Davis, is that if he does not play this week because of the concussion, not everybody rebounds in the same manner with that. And so uh, for me, at least with Higgins, I think he's a hold for me if I have him on my team. I don't know that I'm going to target him, though, because I got to make sure he's okay before I do anything. Like, I just get worried about those, like, multi-week concussion issues. But what do you think about Higgins the rest of the way? Uh, I mean, if someone is down on Higgins, you're right. I mean, concussions are, like, totally a we-don't-know type injury. I mean, you know, Brandon Cooks has had, like, five of them, and we're worried that if he gets one more, his career will be over. And concussions are such a, a touchy topic with NFL players, the concussion protocol obviously has gotten better. And look, you know, we drafted T Higgins in all of these leagues. We want to have T play, but we also want him to be healthy. What I would say is if someone in your league is down on T Higgins as a result of that concussion, and, and honestly, maybe if he doesn't, if he does not play, maybe that actually makes him a better trade target. Like if, if it gets to 1030 and he's out, maybe you send a trade offer to your league mate and you're like, okay, I'll give you, Ramondre Stevenson for T Higgins. I'll give you Rashad Penny for T Higgins. Like, you know, just kind of someone like that because T I feel incredibly great about over the rest of the season. You know, he's going to end up with 1100 yards and eight touchdowns because he absolutely has to for the Bengals to be a team that wins 10 games. And they really need to win 10 games because the AFC is so competitive. So I feel good about trading for T. All right, let's close it out with the Philadelphia Eagles. They drafted Devonta Smith in the first round. Uh, I I think, if I'm not mistaken, you were not in love with that pick at the time. I don't remember, but I, I don't think so. Uh, look, the Eagles, is it, it, they've done a lot of things right this offseason. I think they're going to have a fantastic year. I think they got a chance for the Super Bowl, let's be clear, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, they, they've been a little checkered with the wide receivers, to say the least. We're going on a number of years of this, Davis. And Smith last week in a game where they scored 35 points did not register a catch on four targets. What do you think about Devonta Smith? Is he just the kind of guy that's going to have a few good weeks this season and is not playable going forward? Because clearly A.J. Brown is now the guy there. No, I think you you actually can take some encouraging signs away. Now, obviously, zero receptions, zero points. You're You're not loving that. But how many people had the Eagles pegged for 42 passing attempts in a game they were winning for three quarters, right? I mean, I think we did see the Eagles are going to be a little bit more willing to throw. Smith actually played more snaps and ran more routes than A.J. Brown did. Now, is Devonta Smith, does he have any chance of being a top 15 wide receiver? After one game, I'm ready to say no, absolutely not. You know, A.J. Brown is the man. A.J. Brown is going to be a top five wide receiver. But Devonta Smith can catch long touchdowns. And I mean, that's also the other thing is most fantasy football games are not close. So every once in a while, you're going to eat a four-point game from Devonta Smith, but he's also going to give you a couple, you know, 22-pointers in there where he gets behind the safeties. So feeling feeling totally fine about Devonta Smith. And maybe a guy, uh, the Eagles are favorites this week against the Vikings if he has another down game. I bet you'll be able to trade your league mates, Devonta Smith, I mean, just for nothing. So definitely a trade target maybe after this game against the Vikings. Yeah, two Monday night games, speaking of which, this week in the NFL. All right, we got to take a quick time out here on the show. When we come back, it's time for us to break down tonight's game between the Chargers and Chiefs over on the Daily Fantasy side. So those of you who are playing on DK or on FanDuel, we'll set a lineup coming up next. Also go through some theory as well as to how you could be setting a lineup this week in uh, Daily Fantasy. We'll do a lot more of that, uh, by the way, tomorrow on the show as well. Uh, as a reminder, Davis and I are here to help you with your fantasy football team. First time watching us here on Sports Grid? Okay, welcome aboard. Every day, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern. If you're playing fantasy football season, you're looking for a show to watch to get some help, you can count on us all year. Yeah. Great, great. Coast to coast. You're right. The two fumbles at the goal line. Absolutely, that's the reason. The main reason probably they lost this game. I thought the coach was embarrassing kicking that field goal. He had the ball with 50 seconds left. It's fourth and five. And you just gave this guy 
200 plus million dollars and traded for him and yep. he can't get you five yards to get you a little bit closer and keep the drive moving absolutely ridiculous the sports grid network sports grid your 24 7 sports wagering network they play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game practice. time decisions. Right. This is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live. Man. Prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live. Overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. The early line. He's saving all the receipts from all the haters out there that are sending hate mail and saying the Jets actually stink. But, Robert Salah, the Jets actually do stink. So my question here for the New York Jets is, did you keep a receipt on Robert Salah as your head coach? Because maybe there is a return date that you can send him back and get your money back for this coach that hasn't worked out in New York City. Only on Sports Grid. Minus 170 for an anytime touchdown score. Big numbers. Justified, though. Supposed to be some bad weather here today as well, which likely will keep this game on the ground. It's why we have a low total. This season, he just doesn't have the talent surrounding him. I am encouraged by what I saw a little bit in the preseason with some of the ways that they're going to try to call plays. They obviously did a much better job in that final preseason game of protecting him and keeping him up. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports today here on Sports Grid. Craig Mitchell along with Davis Maddock. Those of you getting ready to play DFS tonight in the single game slate, time is now to get out your app, DraftKings, FanDuel, however you are playing. Davis, naturally a very high total for a game in the Chiefs Chargers. I think this is in the mid 50s or close to it. These teams do have potentially high scoring offenses. We saw this last week for sure. Uh, you know, we're honestly with both teams scored a pretty good amount of points. And so if that's any indication, we could be in for a fun night tonight. I mean, I think this game is fascinating for for both offenses. Keenan Allen is missing for the Chargers. And honestly, you know, we learned a little bit about the Chiefs offense last week and how they plan on divvying up the touches. But I, we didn't learn everything, right? We, we didn't get the complete picture because that game was not competitive. The Chiefs were up 21 to 3. Then they were up 30. I think it was 34 to 14. And, you know, Isaiah Pacheco was getting in there in the fourth quarter. Chad Henney made an appearance. And, you know, Keenan Allen got injured mid-game for the Chargers. And Guyton was in, and then he was out. And then DeAndre Carter, the special teamer guy, is catching touchdowns from Justin Herbert. So I feel like we're, we are still kind of guessing as it pertains to both of these offenses. And that makes it a really interesting single-game DFS slate. All right, so let's take a look at the pricing, see if we can help you out tonight, and uh, see if we can come up with a good strategy here for sure. We've got Patrick Mahomes. He is priced at 17700 on DraftKings. Justin Herbert is sixteen eight. Travis Kelsey is sixteen five. Austin Eckler is 15000 Mike Williams checks in at thirteen five, And then Clyde Edwards-Hilaire at 12900 So... Uh, you got to pick your your quarterback here, obviously. And then, look, coming off the week Kelsey had last week, I don't know how you can't play him tonight. 
Yeah, I mean, look, uh, that's always kind of what's interesting about these showdown slates. These captain prices are are quite expensive. Sort of the the captain strategy is, you know, do we think that one of the Chiefs wide receivers or one of the Chargers wide receivers has the ability to have a a Cooper Cup game, a Justin Jefferson game? Because largely speaking, the uh, you know the highest scoring player of the slate is going to end up being the captain. Now, every once in a while, you'll see something different happen. For example, in that. Uh, the, the opening day of the season, the Bills-Rams showdown, the Bills' defense ended up being the captain because the winning mm-hmm. lineup required a lot of expensive players. Josh Allen was in there. Stephon Diggs was in there. Cooper Cup was in there. You couldn't afford all of those guys together with one of them at the captain. I, I would say my favorite selection for captain tonight is none other than Juju Smith-Schuster. He had five receptions through three drives for the Kansas City Chiefs. He got tackled on I believe the two yard line and then that turned into the Clyde Edwards Lair uh shuffle pass touchdown mm-hmm. that Mahomes threw. But my 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 early inclinations, my my first read after watching the Chiefs play that game against the Cardinals is that Smith Schuster is gonna sleepwalk to a hundred catches this year. I mean he's not even gonna have to be good to get a hundred catches because he is the primary slot wide receiver. Uh Hardman played zero uh slot snaps Marquez Valdez Scantling played zero. Sky Moore came in and played, I think, two snaps out of the slot there. And then, of course, you know, I mean, Kelsey is. He's going to be Kelsey. And then Mike Williams would be my my Chargers captain. I mean, uh, one, I, I was there in person for him scoring three touchdowns against the Chiefs two years ago, on or three years ago on Thursday Night Football. Not, not a particularly fun game to be at. But I think people will maybe be a little down on him after having, I think he only had two targets in a game that Keenan Allen injured his hamstring in against the Raiders last week. So I have a feeling people will maybe be a little down on him. All right, fair enough. Uh, So get your lineup set tonight. Also, this information all free over at dailyroto.com. All right, let's talk about some week one surprises, see if we can double down on a few players. Uh, I was, uh, you know, supremely encouraged by one of the players that I drafted in fantasy and my my wide receiver three, Davis, in Christian Kirk who really was the favorite target by far of Trevor Lawrence. It was, I mean, 12 targets, six catches, 117 yards. I know that a lot of folks go by that air stats. Uh, I don't even know how they calculate that, but apparently Kirk was near the top of that as well. He did not score a touchdown last week, but my goodness was I encouraged. And I feel like if he's the favorite target of Lawrence and Lawrence is throwing 30 passes a game, Kirk could really be very valuable this season. I mean, look, you know, follow the money. Guy gets paid $21 million a year as a free agent. The team probably has, uh, you know, big plans on using him. Perhaps the most encouraging thing was that he was used out of the slot. That is where all his big games for the Arizona Cardinals came in. I think the signing of Zay Jones was, and and the fact that LaVisca Schnolk got traded to the Panthers was like, yep, this is our slot wide receiver. We can, we can have other guys play on the outside, but this is the guy who is playing out of slot. Air yards, by the way, pretty simple calculation. It's just how many yards are between the line of scrimmage and a receiver on all his targets, and then you add all that up, and then you, uh, you air yards per target or just air yards in, in general. But, so it, it, it gets, it's like targets, but like are they targets close to the line of scrimmage or, or down the field? But yeah, super bullish on Christian Kirk. That would be a guy. I would trade Keenan Allen for Christian Kirk right now, I think, with uh, with this hamstring injury because – Kirk looks like, both. I mean, you're locking in like eight targets a week from him, I think. Yeah, no, it looks really good. Uh, okay, now let's go over to Kareem Hunt. And and look, there's going to be a little bit of an inflated feeling after watching Kareem Hunt last week. He's very talented. I understand why he wants to get paid and probably wants to go back to being an RB1 on another team. He's not going to get that opportunity in Cleveland, but he's a better pass catcher, I think, than Nick Chubb. I mean, it seems that way. He scored one last week, four receptions, 24 yards, and two scores also got 46 rushing yards and you can plug and play him pretty much as a flex or, or running back too. I think for the most part Davis, but uh, you know, as we know, there are going to be days where Chubb is going to get 102 touchdowns and hunt is probably only going to get you five, six points. But with Brissette at quarterback, it seems like there's enough for both right now. I think you're, I think you're definitely right. I mean, this team is just going to run the ball so much. They like, and they are six and a half point favorites against the jets. I mean, I, I believe Nick Chubb got 24 touches last week and Kareem Hunt ended up with 16. The weird thing is 
You actually might even prefer Kareem Hunt, though, at this stage, if they're both going to get used this much, because Nick Chubb had only one target in this game. Kareem Hunt had five targets in their week one game. And, um, you know, I mean, Chubb is obviously a great runner, but Hunt is like not particularly shabby as a runner or a receiver either. And I I thought that the big news there as well was that uh, Dearness Johnson, who looked so good in, you know, replacing both of these guys when they missed time last year, he, he just did not play. He was a healthy scratch in week one for the Cleveland Browns against the Panthers. So that's pretty big, which means there's no third guy encroaching on their territory. And that's kind of something we say about running backs in general is you can play a guy in a two-way timeshare. You can play James Robinson or ETN or Jay, like you can play these guys, but once it becomes a three-way timeshare, that's when it gets, you know, a, a two's a company, three's a crowd for starting their, their running back. So I mean, yeah, Hunt, Hunt, another guy would be interested in trying to buy right now. All right, let's uh, close it out with the Denver Broncos, who, uh, by the way, I, I think are in for a major bounce back this week. I really do like Denver this week at home, first game. They always play well in that first game of the season. Teams get tired. Uh, but, you know, J- Javante Williams, I, look, I, I just, I don't know how, how, you, how any, is there any other way to say it at this point? I mean, Melvin Gordon and him are going to split carries. It's just going to keep happening. So will Javante Williams get another 11 catches in an NFL game this season? I'm going to say no, but at the same time, is, is he somebody that if somebody you know, comes calling, maybe, you know, they have Najee Harris or they have Cam Akers and they're like, my gosh, look at, look at these numbers for Javante Williams. He put up 25 fantasy points, didn't even score. I mean, is there a chance he becomes the main guy? I just, I don't, I don't think so, Davis. I think we're right back down the road. By the way, Melvin Gordon always looks good when he's in the game. He always looks good. Yeah, I mean, Melvin Gordon did get a lot of the the high value touches. He was playing on third downs. He was playing in the red zone. I mean, first off against Houston, start them both. The Broncos are going to score like 39 points against the the Houston Texans this week. I think they are going to take a little bit of their frustration out. Uh, that they generated against the Seahawks here. And again, uh, you know, the Broncos offense was quite good in that game. They gained a bunch of yards per play. Russell Wilson threw for 330 yards. And if Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams both don't fumble on the goal line, totally different conversation about the game that they had against the Seahawks, right? So don't, you know, you're starting Judy, you're starting Sutton, you're starting Alberto, you're starting Russ, you're starting Javante, you're starting Melvin Gordon. Um, I, I think it would be impossible to buy on Javante, though, in any of these leagues, right? Like, no one is accepting a trade offer for Javante Williams because, one, he's the type of player you had to love to draft because sure. he was going around guys who were great. You know, he's going around A.J. Brown and Leonard Fournette and Mike Evans. And, like, to take Javante over those guys, you have to be a believer anyways. And his week one performance, if you like him, you go, oh my gosh, he gets all these targets. Like, I'm going to get paid. Melvin Gordon's going to go to the bench eventually. And then if you don't like Javante Williams, same thing. You could be like, well, he just, uh, you know, he got lucky to get those receptions, right? And that's not going to happen. And Melvin Gordon is actually the better priced guy in that backfield. But I'm super excited to see what they do this week against the Texans. Like, I don't, maybe they do just give the ball to Javante. I don't think so. But it's, it's going to be one of those things that I think evolves on a week-by-week basis. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think, and again, I don't like favorites at all in the NFL, but I, I do think Houston's in trouble. I, I think Denver is is not going to want that home crowd thinking that that's going to way that they're going to play all season long. So my guess is you're probably right on that one. All right, we got to take a quick break here on the show. Coming back next, it's time for us to play a little fantasy or reality. So stay on the grid for that. We got Kevin and Donnie coming up at the top of the hour, and then I'm back with you here on Newswire at two o'clock Eastern as we get you ready. Thursday night football in the NFL, the debut of the Amazon Prime games on Thursday night are upon us, so we'll discuss that as well. This is Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes as we continue on with Fantasy Reality next. might be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools 
Expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. For Bo Bichette to record his 22nd ribby of this month is plus 155 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. I like that sprinkle for Bo Bichette in this game against the Rays. I also like to sprinkle on Asia Wilson. Las Vegas, a four and a half point favorite, but we look at Asia Wilson's rebounding prop of 10 and a half, a number she has gone over in six of seven playoff games, including 11 in game number one of the finals. The Sports Grid Network. Minus 170 for an anytime touchdown score. Big numbers. Justified, though. It's supposed to be some bad weather here today as well, which likely will keep this game on the ground. It's why we have a low total. This season, he just doesn't have the talent surrounding him. I am encouraged by what I saw a little bit in the preseason with some of the ways that they're going to try to call plays. They obviously did a much better job in that final preseason game of protecting him and keeping him up. Pro football today, only on SportsGrid. Pharrell, coast to coast. I think Penn State will go to Auburn and win. Auburn looks terrible. I think Oregon can get their reputation back if they beat BYU at Alton. That is like the Broncos going into that uh, Seattle game last night with that crowd. You play at Alton, you're going to have a long day. I don't care who you are. And then Oklahoma should roll Nebraska, but it's a, a rivalry game. Be very careful with that number. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. All right, Justin Jefferson broke his uh, career record for receiving yards. He had over 150 for the Vikings at the half. This is why we tell you, just draft wide receivers earlier and figure it out at running back later. You know, take Jamal Williams and Cordero Patterson, because guess what? Look at look at all these names here at, at the top of wide receiver. Justin Jefferson, first round pick. Cooper Cup, first round pick. Devontae Adams, first round pick. Jamar Chase, first round pick. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Tyree Kill, A.J. Brown, and Devontae Adams. All impressive. Tyreek, the only one that did not go over 100 yards, only finished with 94. Devontae Adams did find the end zone. The setup here between these three wide receivers is to be super important to their football teams, and that was on display in week number one. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today. The Tampa Bay Rays are activating Shane McClanahan off the injured list, so he's ready to go to make three, four more starts, Davis, before... I'm guessing he opens up as the Rays' wild card starter in Game 1. He was a pretty heavy Cy Young Award candidate, along with Justin Verlander, who is coming back tomorrow, and Dylan Cease Davis, who has now taken the lead as far as the Cy Young Award. Do you have a winner at this point? Do you think it comes down to these last few starts? It's crazy that an award like this would come down to the end. Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, it totally depends on, I guess, who, like, shoves the hardest in their final start right now in the FanDuel Sportsbook Verlander's minus 125 Cease is you know coin flipping with him at plus 120 uh I also did just happen to see like it's pretty close on the NL side as well uh I I could see your guy Sandy Alcantara uh ending up losing it here in the end he is minus 210 right now but uh I mean look a couple a couple well Maybe in a different year, right? I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna walk that back. We're in a different time now because it used minus to be so much ten. about wins. Yeah, you you think minus two ten is a lock? You think, is that is that Craig Mish's five star gold gold left. bar lock of the week? Three weeks left. I mean, listen, I'm I'm also I'm also more in tune to to his starts and Davis. He faces Washington and the Cubs the next two. You know, like I mean, I know these things. You know that that's the way that it's. But but again, if it is a look. If it's a single game, Davis, we saw the other day, DeGrom was minus 450 and lost to the Cubs. But in an award situation, when you're down to the wire like this with only a few left, I do think that that he has won. I am very biased, too, admittedly. 
but I think in an award when you're at minus 200, I mean, again, Davis, they would gladly take the money on the other guys there, you know? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I guess I was just thinking of it more from like a better of like a better's perspective than a guy who watches all of all Qantara starts, but I'm sitting here looking at, you know, best team in the world, the, the, the Dodgers top pitcher right. being plus 550. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't know, man, if he's, you know, that, that, that was, that was the only thing. I mean, it's probably a pretty yeah. uh, illiquid market. Like it's, it's probably fine. Alcantara is. Yeah. No, no I, I think the AL is still, it's crazy because when you have, yeah. again, a minus 120 and a plus 110, I mean, that just tells you all you need to know. Uh, but Sandy was minus 300, then minus 270, then minus 250. And now it's down to minus 210. So it's fair, but uh, talk to me when it's like minus 110, minus 120. Then at that point, I think it becomes a coin flip in my opinion. But regardless of that, Cy Young Award could come down to the next two weeks. How insane is that in the American League? All right, uh, let's get away from that and get back to some football. Here's fantasy or reality. All right, time to take a look at tonight's game between the Chargers and Chiefs. I am glad we are not doing the side on this one because, my gosh, I think that with the points being involved, this is a very tough game for me to call. It almost feels like it's going to be a really close, exciting game. But the total, I think, is definitely something that is up for discussion. The total tonight over on FanDuel is 53 and a half. sees 54 in some spots. And again, minus 115 are the odds on that to win 100. Davis over, under, fantasy reality. Uh, game tonight goes over the 53 and a half. I mean, come on. Imagine it not going over 53 and a half. Every time we get one of these island games with the Chiefs versus another great offense, what do we all want? We want Chiefs, Rams, Mexico City, 54 to 51. Every possession is a touchdown. We got return touchdowns and defensive touchdowns and guys you've never heard of scoring 40 yard touchdowns. Like that's what we all want. No one wants to tune in to, you know, Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes, you know, grinding it out four yards at a time. And, you know, maybe I'm like a little bit worried about that because it's a Thursday night game and, you know, these teams barely got to practice as it was. There was a great study. I, I believe football outsiders published it that, Teams that did not play their starters at all in the preseason were significantly worse yards per play than they were in the aggregate last year. Now, the Chiefs do always play their starters in the preseason a little bit. The Chargers don't play their starters at all in the preseason. But just a, a, a fascinating, a fascinating game. I'm I'm super into it. I'm, I'm going over. Yeah, see, the thing is, is that if, if, if Brett decides to put this in every week uh, on the over-under, I'm going to go under every time and, and it doesn't matter who the teams are just because Thursday night football has produced, I believe if I'm not mistaken, at least 60% unders over the course of Thursday night has been, uh, you know, happening in the NFL. So I, I just have to go with that trend. I like you want to see an over. I wanted to see an over last Thursday. It did not. I wanted to see an over Sunday. It did not. Uh, I'm going to go under or Sunday night, excuse me. I'm going to go under 53 and a half. Hope for the over, but if you're asking me what to do, this is sort of like a close your eyes blind, 10 picks, six times under. That's the direction that I'm going to go tonight. I got 27-24 in this one, under 53 and a half. Uh, okay, so uh, QB1s, rest of the season, Davis. We saw Trey Lance, who some people thought could jump into the QB1 conversation, look pretty awful. We saw Dak Prescott go down we know that he will not finish as a qb1 at the end of the season even if he comes back really strong and and look there had there have been some quarterback play that has not been great right out of the gate now one player who did play very well that is of course washington commanders quarterback carson wentz if you want to dial it back four or five years ago wentz was a rock solid starting qb1 at the beginning of the season 10 11 12 somewhere along those lines fantasy or reality wentz will now finish the season as a top 12 fantasy quarterback davis is this fantasy or reality it's pretty close which is not a sentence that i i said myself saying 10 days ago so i'm i'm ultimately gonna land on fantasy but i'm gonna i'm gonna talk through my thought process here so initial thought process is you know mclaurin pretty good john dotson looked really good in his first nfl game and then how about curtis samuel back from the dead 10 targets four carries looked really good 
Uh, you know, Antonio Gibson looked really good uh, catching the ball down the field. Like they got a lot of weapons there. And then I continue that thought process further. And I'm like, I've done this with Carson Wentz before. I, I have, I've been around, I've seen this, you know, he throw like I, you know, to his favor, he is a bad quarterback in a way that most quarterbacks are not bad. Most bad quarterbacks are far too conservative. And then when a conservative quarterback makes a mistake, then you really can't win, right? When Teddy Bridgewater or Jacoby Brissett starts making mistakes, you are just dead because he's not bringing any big plays with that. Wentz is bad and makes mistakes, but at least he makes mistakes trying to make plays happen down the field. In week one, he threw the ball six times, 20 yards down the field or more. That was the most of any player in the NFL in week one. But at the end of the day, he's Carson Wentz. He is, he's going to, it's, it's going to be bad and, and he's not going to get there. He's either going to get benched or get hurt and he's just not going to make it all the way to the end. Yeah. I, I like to play this on the back end as opposed to the front end. Instead of going through the top guys, I like to go through the bottom to see if he can get it, you know, his way above. And so my thought process is, okay, yeah, he could be better than both quarterbacks in New York and he could be better than Davis Mills. So that's like three. He could be better than Matt Ryan. That's probably four. And probably, you know, Ryan Tannehill, I guess that's five. In the end, he probably, even with the rushing yards, may finish better than Fields. So that's six. Maybe even Mariota. Sure. Maybe Jameis Winston, if all things go right. But I'm like stretching at that point. You know, like I, I'm pretty much right there now wondering how many other quarterbacks, and in Prescott too, but how many other quarterbacks can he really be ahead of? Uh, can he be ahead of 10? <laughs> end of the season i don't think so i got fantasy here i just don't i i mean if, if you give me a number of guys who i think can, can jump into it trevor lawrence is one of those for sure uh you know may, maybe winston can i don't think so but maybe winston is you know has a great year uh yeah i, I even think as the season goes on baker mayfield's gonna get better too i know he looked terrible in the first week but yeah i got i got uh fantasy on carson wentz he's a flex quarterback and that's it for me all right m and m is uh is back in the news here eminem's watching uh these these current hip-hop stars who are out there and basically says that he's being inspired to keep making music and te- and keep rolling on i know that he had a new album if i'm not mistaken like three years ago uh and i know that he has the second part of his greatest hits coming out and i'm, I'm supposing that this is why he's doing some media now but i would ask you fantasy or reality you would like to see a full-on eminem comeback davis is this fantasy or reality You know, like 13-year-old me, 14-year-old me would have loved this, right? 8 Mile, great. The Marshall Mathers LP, great. I just think, I think that Marsh, I I think Eminem is just someone you kind of grow out of. And I mean, maybe some people don't, you know, there's some music from my childhood that I still really, that I still really like, but uh, Eminem, not one of them. I've outgrown it. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I've, I think I've said this before on the show. I'm totally becoming a boomer, though, with my music taste because I do not listen to very much new music. And if I do listen to new music, it's by someone that I already know of who released a new album or whatever. But very rarely am I going into, you know, YouTube music or, or Apple music or whatever and like, oh, I've never heard of this artist before. Like, let me click on it and listen to it. Right. That, is, that is extremely rare these days. Yeah, I, I mean, I, listen, I, I, I'm fine with it, but you know, it, it, it's really not going to resonate with me anymore. And, uh, and look, I am a big fan of Eminem and a big fan of Dr. Dre. And obviously them being at the Super Bowl, I thought was really cool, too. But whether or not he comes back is sort of like irrelevant to me. My music taste still probably goes back. If you said to me, what is the most likely thing that you're listening to in the car, which is pretty much the majority of the time that I'm listening to radio, I actually haven't turned on my turntables in a while. I mean, that's how busy I am. I took right to my left in my studio. I have two turntables, mixer, the whole thing. Uh, but uh, it's probably like uh, 80s music, 90s music, and then the old school hip hop channel. And that's pretty much it. As far as a comeback, Davis, I don't know. Like, yes, no, I, I think it's sort of irrelevant to me. What I, what I was surprised to hear, though, Davis, is that he had a second grouping of greatest hits to come out. Like, I, I could definitely go through, like, 10, 15 songs with Eminem, and I didn't realize there was, like, another catalog that he could put out that he could sell. I, didn't, I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't really realize. I didn't really realize that either. It's funny you mentioned the, uh, the turntables, though. We, uh, yeah. we just kind of redid our 
living room around. Our our record player was like behind a chair, basically. So it was hard to get into the records and put it on. And then you got to turn the stereo on. But now we have it set up in a nice little spot in like our den. So just pretty much whenever you want it on, you reach, you grab it. It's nice. I mean, which is such like a hipstery thing, but I do love the record player. It is really nice yeah. to have one and have it playing, especially when you're cooking dinner. He's got like a nice, re- it's the best. Yeah, I have Technique twelve hundreds. I've had those. Uh, I, I used to have them, you know, thirty years ago, and then about uh, six, seven years ago, I rebought them. With somebody locally who was selling them, very expensive, uh, but and have the covers on them, and and still in like it's it's honestly the best piece of music material that I think you could ever buy. Those things just last absolutely forever. New needles, the whole thing. But gosh, like no time anymore to just sit down and 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 put them on like it's really sad it's, maybe i'll recommit myself to doing that as we go on here this football season all right coming up next it is time for us to dive into the sports grid 60 so stay on the grid for that kevin and donnie are coming your way in about 10 minutes with the early line and then i'm back with you at two o'clock eastern for newswire we go around the country and update you on the latest in sports wagering where it may become legal updates of course always in massachusetts and california and getting some data in from the first week of the NFL season. So stay on the grid. Davis and I will be right back in a couple of minutes to wrap up our show here this Thursday, right here on Fantasy Sports Today. Don't go away. I think they're a live dog today at plus three and a half. I actually like the Cyclones and Matt Campbell. Woo. Give me them outright, baby. Oh. 40 yard line six times. Yep. Now that amounting to three points is unforgivable, but they did move the ball. I know it's dangerous to say this, but I'm still going to say it. Oh. It can't be that bad <laughs> again. It just can't. College football today. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. For Bo Bichette to record his 22nd ribby of this month is plus 155 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. I like that sprinkle for Bo Bichette in this game against the Rays. I also like to sprinkle on Asia Wilson. Las Vegas, a four and a half point favorite, but we look at Asia Wilson's rebounding prop of 10 and a half, a number she has gone over in six of seven playoff games, including 11 in game number one of the finals. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Marlins minus 125, plus 105 for the Phils, total of seven. Okay, I have, just so we're clear, uh, I have Alcantara on the uh, first five innings, minus a buck 52. Uh, and, and not only that, so that's my big bet on Pharrell and events.com. And I also want to uh, take the Marlins in this game, believe it or not. I think he'll beat them tonight in Miami. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, Gerald Everett, uh, probably, you know, not drafted in some leagues. And again, with no Keenan Allen, he will suit up this week against Kansas City for the Chargers. Robert Tunyon on Green Bay. None of their receivers look good. Hayden Hurst maybe gets an extra look. This is how bad the tight end position is. Um, Only 12 guys scored in the double digits. It is just a, a desperately brutal position. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Where are you at on Seattle? Or do you come away from this game thinking they'll be a little bit better than you had anticipated? Even though I watched that game last night and they did beat the Denver Broncos, which I didn't think they would be able to beat. So typically say, okay, maybe a little bit higher in Seattle, but I'm really not because I saw a team yesterday that just hung on and said, hey, we're going to let this other team just drive down the field repeatedly and get lucky on some fumbles and some bad decision making. Only on Sports Grid.
Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid as we get ready to wrap up the show. Don't forget tomorrow, join us here as we'll go through the entire DFS slate for Sunday right here on Fantasy Sports Today. Now let's turn it over to Davis as we wrap it up with today's Sports Grid at 60. Well, in the last 15 days, the state of Kansas has had over 100,000 rejections of people who were not quite over the state line leaving Missouri to come over into Kansas to do legal sports betting. Now, five of the eight states that border the state of Missouri have legalized sports betting. I know this is maybe more of a topic for Craig's other show, but uh, (laughs) it appears that the governor and uh, the legislature here in Missouri are starting to feel the pressure crank up a little bit as all of this data comes in about people literally fleeing their state to play sports bets and give money to other states. I'm, I'm very much hoping that uh, when we are doing this show next year, Craig, I will have a full menu of legal sports <laughs> books available to me as the uh, governor here feels the crunch. Yeah, waiting on Missouri for sure. Speaking of which, no more waiting on Missouri for Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright, as they last night became the first battery in Major League Baseball history to make 325 appearances together. What a historical night. And doesn't it feel just right that it happens to be the Cardinals? There are very few teams these days where players end up playing their entire careers for. But you have it with uh, Wainwright, although he did start off with the Atlanta Braves organization. You have it with Wainwright. You have it with Yadier Molina. And it's only fitting that Albert Pujols comes back for the end, too. The Cardinals have been a great story all season long, and their fans are so amazing. Well-deserved to get that uh, feeling to see those guys there on the mound for the very end, of at least of Molina's career, that's for sure. That'll do it for the show. Thanks again to everybody watching, for sure. Thanks to our great graphics department. Steve, fantastic job, as always. Our friends over at LTN. For our producer, Brett Levy, co-host Davis Maddock, I'm Craig Mish. The early line's coming up next. I'm back with you at 2 o'clock Eastern for Newswire. Until then, have a great rest of your Thursday. Great, great.